This week's episode is brought to you by Tabletop Backer Party on Facebook, which is the largest board game crowdfunding group on this side of the internet. Hello everyone, welcome to I'd Back That Kickstarter with Glory Hound. Dr. Glory Hog. And? <laughs> and Greg Dixon. He looked so shocked when it, when it switched over. I knew it was soon, but I didn't realize it was that soon. <laughs> <laughs> it was that soon. Greg hadn't seen our new opener, so he was like, wait, what? what's, what's happening? happening? I don't know. He was reading uh, Eric's uh, comments. I was reading oh comments, gosh. and I realized, oh, we're on. He was Hello. like, uh, one, three, five, seven. I don't understand what this is about. He's I'm saying he can't sure even, I'm like even numbers. Oh. oh. <laughs> Thank you for everybody joining us today. It looks like we have Daniel and Battle Cry on here. We have Eric. We have Kabuki Kid, Unicorns of the Apocalypse T-shirt. That's right. For today yeah. for what we're talking about. That's true. We also have our super awesome supporter of the show now, Tabletop Backer Group, and they have featured a couple of really cool Kickstarters that we're just going to take a look at really quick, guys. We have Arch Ravels, and when I saw this at Gen Con, it was really interesting because. I, and you, you guys probably haven't seen this. They actually no. had people, like, knitting oh. at their station. So, like, they're knitting. And it's a game about knitting. And it's going to be worker placement and stuff like that. And it's super cute. It sounds neat. I mean, neat. Well, ah. we may or may not talk about this one, guys. I'm kind <laughs> of excited about it. It's just about there's so many Kickstarters that came up. Like, with this last week, it was crazy. Uh, it was many. it was ridiculous how many kickstarters came up Give guys hi michael thanks so much for joining us yeah where's vincent i didn't see him in here uh -oh. oh my goodness somebody do a wellness check right oh there we go unicorns <laughs> There's Vince. <laughs> <laughs> we also have Edge of Darkness that is also on Kickstarter, and I believe this is that like a big box game. There. Yeah, it is one to you'll need more than 15 seconds to browse that one. I think this one here we just ended up like get. I think we passed by it because it was like an expansion to something. I don't know. I can't remember. There was something we were looking at this one too. I was like, oh, it's so hard making choices. Well, we gotta make Guys. sure there's a good mix in the the lineup of you know like a big well, box game. Absolutely, and some other ones. absolutely. We want we want to please everybody yeah. here. And you so. want to feature some of the smaller companies and stuff as well. Right. So it's so hard making choices, but these are two that you can get more information on on Tabletop Backer Group, guys. Okay. Let's see here. So we are going to be at RinCon. Yes. Yeah, all of us are. Yeah. On Greg's accident. going to RinCon, guys. It's going to happen. I didn't <laughs> expect <laughs> it. We didn't even invite him, but he's still going. And he still he invited himself, and then he was like, you know, what? I'm just going to go. Well, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be there. You can reject me if you'd like, but I will be there. <laughs> I you might like be sadly standing in the corner looking at you guys at you a like table. You like come like over to our table and you're like, so guys. And you're like, I don't think we know on? you. I don't think we know what's you. What's going Greg. on, guys? <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> Uninvited. Un well, exactly. We're gonna have a table down at Rincon, which is really exciting. So we're gonna get to teach and new games. Chairs. It, well, that too. You do I get hope. to sit. We didn't oh. actually get that in the contract. Ooh, oh. well. We're gonna have I a lot of stand-up games. Inflatable balls to sit on. Could you? Yeah. I mean For that core workout right yeah, here? Yeah, exactly. You, you know. <laughs> all the cool kids are doing it, buddy. Good core workout, is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can't you tell? <laughs> I can. Dad bod for the win. Oh, my goodness. Well, thank you so much for everybody that joined us today. There's the hawk. We are, we'll make sure to comment and leave uh, what you guys are going to end up backing got throughout Kabuki's, this. hawks, unicorns. Oh, my goodness. I'm so all excited about suspects. this lineup this week, guys. This is a good lineup this week. Oh, my goodness. It's crazy. Okay. This is a tough one. Are you going to back something this week, Greg? Well, it's a tough week. I <laughs> mean, I, I, they all are good <laughs> in different ways. And so I kept kind of going back and forth on, like, which one, uh, you know. Did you? Got my attention the most. Okay. First up, we have Manchuko. This is by Penguin and Panda Productions. It's going to be for one to four players. And it's going to last about 60 to 90 minutes. Now... What's up? I'm laughing at Romeo over here. Sarah Melly. Oh, oh. You remember Sarah Melly. Looking good. <laughs> What's up, man? So this one here is... Oh, dang. Game Boy Geek. What? All-star lineup. He gets on just to diss on Just Greg. to diss on me. <laughs> um, welcome to the show, Dan, maybe. Or you can go away. <laughs> he, he just, he Marco Polo, he was like, you're uninvited Saturday. Yeah, oh, that's right, that's right. oh so sad, so sad. <laughs> 
So this game here is a really interesting game with the worker placement. I got to play this at Gen Con. Ooh. I am so excited you about the worker placement it. portion of this, guys, because as you're placing workers in this game to win areas of control, so you can get benefits for those, when you win the area, your workers go into this pile, and then whatever workers were there previously, you get those workers instead, which the different workers uh, are different colors and yeah, will like yeah. you'll gain levels of things differently with with which workers you're using. So that's gonna alter where you might place because right. you might be incentivized to go to another location. Absolutely. Based off of what's there already. Okay, that's cool. That's and cool. That portion of it, I was like, oh my gosh, I love this portion of the game so much because it takes it from, okay, this is just a worker placement game where you're throwing stuff out and everything. You're just trying to win stuff yeah. to, do I really want to win this area right now? Like, those are not the workers I need. And then they have a portion of this where you have, if you get too many workers, you get penalized for it because you start creating too much Notice. Notice, yeah. Because like lock up where you're I was like going to say, right. that reminds me of lock up. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, Greg, what's your first impression of this game? Well, I wasn't sure how it distinguished itself, apart from the theme, which I do think is interesting, how it distinguished itself from other worker placement games. But some of that stuff you've mentioned um, is different, is unique. I mean, we, we mentioned lock up. Um, aspects of it remind me of asking for troubles because you kind of go get resources in one place that you then turn in for other resources that you need. Right. So I don't know. Um, I like that they're going for like this uh, unique historical theme, although it's kind of a depressing unique <laughs> historical theme. <laughs> I mean, that was my. Fr if you're asking what my first impression was, it was kind of that. Like, you're like, oh, oh I'm in an occupied country, <laughs> being oppressed. But I mean, you get to play kind of like, for lack of a better like phrase, like a Robin Hood type that's mm -hmm. like helping out the citizens and kind of doing that, you know, clandestine. So. I, the theme, I kind of came around on the theme. Like, it appeals to me because it's at least something different and unique. I'm not trading goods in the Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that was that was my mm -hmm. first impression. Now, Happy Fun Time is asking, are the worker spots modular as well? And no, they're not. The board is modular as you're putting it together, but I think that's just for the sake of getting the board out <laughs> because they have a round board with, like, these little pieces that come out, but all of them still come out, and you don't change, like, where they're at or anything with that. But it is is a pretty board, you know. Uh, Dr. Glory Hog, what are your impressions? This is, uh, it reminds me strongly of a movie, I don't know if you guys have heard of it, called Braveheart. <laughs> oh, yeah. Where they're playing the Scottish games uh -huh, and like cable I've tossing and like throwing rocks and they're like, this is us just throwing <laughs> rocks. We're definitely not training martially. <laughs> and then whenever, whenever like, you know, the poop goes down and it's like the swords <laughs> out of haycocks and like when the poop hits the yeah, ceiling all fan. Yeah, all of a sudden like axes are coming out from like the thatched roofs <laughs> and like everything. So yeah, I was um, I so I had heard about this game before, like I heard the theme of it and everything. I was like, okay, this is interesting. I was kind of like looking at it, and I was like, what you know, like you said, what sets it apart from other worker placements? Because right. there's been such a run on worker placement in general. And then like I heard the theme, and I was like, wow, th I can honestly say I don't have another game like this in my right, library. Right, right, right. And uh, it was just a very interesting idea of like, okay, you're in occupied China, and you're trying to practice your martial arts, but not like still like gain. Glo glory for your house, but like not so much that you attract <laughs> the oppressors. So you're like, yeah. like we're really awesome. Pass it along. <laughs> Except don't tell those guys. <laughs> but don't tell those guys in yeah. the uniforms. And, the and guns. I'm pretty sure I've watched movies based off of this. I've never really thought of myself as playing this game. So for me, I have to like, I have to know more. Like it really actually intrigued me more to see like well, I'm glad how they handled the subject matter. I was glad to hear the glory hadn't played it too because it was definitely had a. T I was leaning towards kind of a try before you buy yeah. kind of vibe with this one. So you can see on the board right here, yeah. you see those gray meeples right there. Uh -huh. So the gray meeples are going to end up winning that area there. And then you see the three workers there. You have like a black, a gray, and a tan. Yeah. And those would be the ones they'd receive. So yeah. you can actually go into an area with like maybe win an area with two meeples and get four and back. Get and then yes. you're like, oh, crap, now I'm in dangerous territory because now I'm going to get seen by people and like get penalties because I'm, of that. I'm, I'm uh, sad to hear that it's this sounding better and better the more you talk about <laughs> it because <laughs> I'm more and more tempted. Although I have so many worker placement <laughs> games that are of this weight. Yes. I still don't know if it's for me. You know what I mean? Right. I liked how you were shocked when she's like, oh, when I played this at Gen Con, I was shocked. I was like, you played yeah, this? You didn't even know. Okay, okay. It wasn't <laughs> just me. I like how everyone's talking about Braveheart in the comments, though. I just feel like <laughs> this is the time to bust out like my one quote that I always say, which is like, I could crush you. Crush you like a what -um. 
Oh my god! So you gotta throw, you gotta throw that rock. <laughs> and he takes that little rock and he throws it. Bink! Right in Hamish's face. I haven't seen it in a while. Apparently, you watch it regularly. I've watched it more. Th- it's been years, <laughs> but I mean, yeah, that's when Mel Gibson takes you know, William Wallace takes that little rock yeah. and hits Hamish right in the forehead. And he's like. Oh, they're like, all right, get him, big guy, get him. And he just, boom, <laughs> he's out. I did not uh, predict that this game would lead us to talking about uh, no, Braveheart, not at Braveheart, all. but no. I see now why. It yeah. does make sense. Doesn't does it? Sense. Like, it lines yeah. up. I mean, I guess different countries, different times, but. Yeah. And in this game, they do make getting those meeples and the different colors very important because that's how you actually upgrade some of your powers and stuff is okay. by having a certain amount of those color yeah. meeples. When you bring ba- them back, you well, know? M- more so than my own thoughts, right? I want to know. You played it. What yes. I yeah, mean, I know. I really want to back hear I liked it a lot, it. guys. Okay, okay. <laughs> I really liked it a lot. <laughs> this is all news to me. I'm so surprised. Yeah, it's news to me, but it's, it's surprising well, to me that it's news to you. When it's I pushing <laughs> me further along the idea of wanting to back it because I was kind of like in the middle compared to yeah, the other kind worker placement. Yeah, kind of a try before you buy it. Right. Well, there's uh, another worker placement this week, too, and like this is pushing me. T- I mean, if she liked it, then that's yeah. usually like a, a win. When I had played this game, it was... I wasn't able to talk a whole bunch about it or anything like that yet because it was still in its like pre-production sure, sure. phase and everything. Did they do knitting in this game also? They did not do knitting in nobody this game. Nobody was knitting at the table. No, nobody was knitting at the table, but There might be knitters you know, that you can save from the oppressors though. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> what would you be like? <laughs> like a hard knitting? silence. <laughs> like my knitting is cat style where you're like <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there's yeah. people that you go and, like, save. Like, you help yeah. them out, right? And then you knit them a sweater. Some of and them might be knitters. And you could be like, your cat style is no match for my kangaroo style. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, like, you just knit. I don't. <laughs> wombat that's style. Another, that's another. Is there a wombat style That's the Our Travelry expansion is the wombat and cat knitting. <laughs> <laughs> we have said so many sentences I did not expect hearing she today. Did, she does not have a secret copy hidden away. I know about all of her dirty, <laughs> dirty gaming secrets and all the random games we have. Like, let's talk about the games we've gotten recently. That we would be pretty funny if she's oh like, I God. already <laughs> have it and pulls it out. Actually. We got, we got War of the Worlds in. And <laughs> yeah, we also so did just, I, but I haven't played it yet. We just got in Crave, mm. the deck builder. Yeah. That was that vampire thing, yeah. deck That's builder, right. that we backed. That was like cyberpunky vampires. A lot of stuff arrived recently, it seems yeah. like. Yeah. yeah. And it was like, although it's good, you're also kind of like, oh, man. Too much. Got to get all this in. We do have a stack on our mm-hmm. table of like the games that like we got in that we like need to play. And Eric says that there are solo mode rules on BGG2, which I haven't played the solo mode, but I really liked this game a lot. And I thought it was unique for a worker placement game because that management of meeples is what really drove it home here for me personally. Meeple management. That's like the meeple the management. That's yeah. going to be my new job position. It'll be like, <laughs> and, uh, the meeple manager. Oh, I, am, uh, I, I can see the t-shirts already. <laughs> I'm, into, I'm into meeple management. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm no. a middle Meeple manager. I'm a, I manage meeples. <laughs> oh, I love this. Okay, well, this one's She's actually right this down. is <laughs> actually going She's down. She's about getting me cards, but there was like, what could she put under there? Like shenanigans. <laughs> well, our meeple management, and then our burrito pins. There yeah, that's oh, what we need. We need burritos. burrito pins, guys. And this is not too many burritos, right? Is it like fifty bucks if I remember right? It is, is not too bad at all. So this is forty nine. It says forty nine no, no. for the base. Is like a deluxe version. Okay. Yeah, it's forty nine for the base it's on the it. But you can style. get it for fifty bucks, which is these <laughs> days pretty reasonable. <laughs> Board games of our lives. Uh, do you have a <laughs> hidden copy of Manchuko you've been practicing without me? That's mm. awesome. <laughs> if anyone has a secret copy that they've been playing without me, it's her because she's home during the day to play that stuff. All right, Greg, would you back this game? Uh, I'm going to – I always try to narrow it down to just one each week. Right. So I'm going to say no. I'm on the fence still. I want to play it. I want to see what it's like. Cause okay. I have even more worker – I have too many worker placements. You do have a you lot You are a big fan of worker I placement games. I have a lot games. already, and I just – I don't know if I – I just learned – I just got Artemis Project. Like yeah. That's another kind of s- worker that's placement. That's the other Kickstarter we got <laughs> in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's like I don't know if I need enough – I mean, of course, by the time it ba- – you know, delivers. Who knows? But all right, Doctor Pass for now. Doctor Glory, how would you back this game? I have no idea. I'm so because I was gonna say no. I was leaning on you know. I was yeah. actually leaning with Greg, but then you're saying it's so good. So now I I'm know. like, I feel like I need to look at it with fresh eyes, and I then we need smart. to have like you need to go back and then have like conversations about it where I need to, com- I need to know more. I you think. need to know more. Yeah. For me okay. Now. But also like, there's not a rush. I'm not gonna back it on this show right this now. This one here for me is a win because of the meeple management that you. Have going on through oh, here. Oh, actually, I'm a I'm a meeple. That's what I do professionally. Oh, really? Yeah. I heard yeah. you have cards. You're having cards made up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I mean, if you know anyone who's looking for meeple management, I am. Uh, I thought that just created for a secondary position. I thought that just created a little bit of a fresh new feel <laughs> for a regular worker placement so game for me. Clean, clean. And plus, I like you know being 
I like I like the theme of it. I like going in and being like a she, student, and you're like a master. I'm surprised that you're not trying to play the oppressor side, though. That seems more like oh, the side. Geez. Wow. She wants to play the side that wow. catches them. <laughs> She's like, I see you practicing martial arts over there. My couch is real comfy. <laughs> so is mine. Just FYI. Oh, Kabuki Kid says, Master, Master of Meeples, I'm pulling your strings. Oh, nice. Master. A little Metallica and Master. Oh, yeah. Vincent's tried sitting on the fence once. Don't read that last part. Oh, sorry. <laughs> whoop, whoop. <laughs> She's scrolling up. Well, I'm making sure we didn't miss any anybody's comments, Lots guys. Lots of good conversation okay. in the chat. We should go back to talking about the references. We always appreciate. We also appreciate. And the one versus all variant, Yeah, where you're too. the oppressor. Yeah. According well. to your husband. <laughs> well, she does typically Who like enjoys to play couches. The, she's wow. decided it likes to be like the hall monitor, you know, and like catch you. <laughs> is she a snitch? Is she a narc? <laughs> I'm not a narc. I don't, I don't get listen, narc vibe. Listen, I don't get narc vibe. I just vibe. like things done a certain way, and if oh, you can't do things oh, the way that I like oh, them, I mean, that's oh. where that's where the issues come ah. in, guys, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I like how she's looking at me. Like, <laughs> well, obviously, like, I've been living with you for like 16, 17, 18 <laughs> years now. Obviously, I'm doing it right. <laughs> well enough. The way that she wants. Well enough. I've gotten over the we'll whole, the, the pans will ceremony. never be in the same oh, place ever is. again. <laughs> yeah. Okay, had, like, guys. Our biggest guys, argument is about where the silverware guys, goes when we moved into this house. Whenever you put things in a certain spot, do you not like put them back in that spot. Like if you have a cup, you put it in the same spot the when you put it up, right? The problem is he have his same spot and you have Here's your same right. spot. His, spot, two his spot is never the same spot. <laughs> so there's always two sides to the story. Because ask her right now and have her honestly answer, where are your keys and wallet right now? <laughs> where are they? They're on the table. Which out table? <laughs> out in the living are room. Are you sure? 100%. You're willing to bet me $100 on camera. That's my <laughs> money. Like, yeah. it's $100. Uh -huh. It's the same Here's $100. What you said. Did you call me yesterday asking me for something <laughs> that you couldn't find? Oh, my God. While I was at work? Here's All what right. you should have said All when right. you asked where your keys of wallet were. <laughs> They're in the house. Yeah. <laughs> she always loses them constantly. All right. Next up, but guys. But she also always finds them. We no, have she <laughs> asked me to find them. <laughs> next Ask up. Next up, we have Godspeed by Pandasaurus Games. This is for two to five players. It lasts about 60 to 90 minutes. This is all about like an alternate reality space race is happening. And then we're sending out somebody to an exoplanet. And well, it's all about the alternate <laughs> reality where you can find your keys in the morning. Oh, come on. Drop it. Drop it. That's a good game. So, guys, this <laughs> yes, will be is. the last time that Dr. Glory Hawk's <laughs> on the show. Do you um, know how much? <laughs> yeah. Vincent, would you be interested <laughs> in joining us? <laughs> Hey, <laughs> if anyone's going to fill the seat, it's Vincent. That's true, man. That's true. <laughs> Come on over, buddy. <laughs> so we sent somebody out into space to basically, like, go to an exoplanet and not necessarily terraform, but kind of, you know, make the planet. I guess it's not like terraforming no, Mars or anything. No, it's about anything. taking the resources, the natural resources of that planet. Right. But yeah. exploiting the planet. But in planet. a friendly way. The Soviets are it's already there. It's a space there. race, but it's more like a settlement race. Yeah, yeah. China's already there. Yeah. Then you have to have Spoilers. stuff that's happening. Well, that's on what the we're planet. about to discover. See, he's not alone. You have stuff that's happening on the planet that you have <gasps> to take care of. You have an asymmetrical gameplay where every single uh, nation has a different ability and has different people that they actually work with. So sometimes one nation can do something while another nation can't. So you kind of have to work together on things and stuff. This was really, really interesting. I love Pandasaurus games. They come out with some yeah. really cool looking They've stuff and everything. Uh, Greg, what is your first impressions of this game? Well, it's super backed. I mean, it's it's getting a lot of buzz. It's got the most backers of any game this week. And I can see why. I love the idea of like what you've heard is a lie and yeah. this is alternate like history that we're going to, you know, explore. <laughs> I like science fiction <laughs> that's sort of based off of real science if that makes sense, but like with a twist. Um, so I am very excited about this one. And Pan like you said, Panasaurus has a great track record with like Dualosaur Island and the mind and the game and uh, Nyctophobia. I mean, they've, they've Dead Man's Cabal is good too. Dead Man's Cabal, which you just told me recently was good. I haven't played that one yet. So it's exciting. Now it is first time designers. So that's like, okay, you know, but they've worked with first time designers in the past and, and put out good products. So I'm excited. I love the idea of the theme for sure. The theme was great. The yeah. art looks great. Dr. Glory Hog, what did you think? Yes. You think just yes? <laughs> this is the <laughs> thing that I mean pulled me in the most. What about you? Yeah, no, you, because I mean, normally space isn't normally my thing, but alternate realities, yeah. um, 
like a terraforming or gathering resources. I like all those types of themes in games. And I always like the idea of like, I'm hoping, and I don't know if this is true or not, but that there will be like maybe some interesting encounters with some space space beings of some sort. I don't know. That would be cool. But this is more about like bidding and worker placement. So placing yeah. your workers in certain areas and then bidding to take resources and stuff like that that are coming in. So I feel like this is going to be a lot of conversation and right, which appeals to me. Right, exactly. And building yourself up in this game. But it's not going to appeal to everyone. It's good that you pointed that out. Oh, some absolutely. Some people are going to like that sort of more solo, like it's multiplayer be solo experience where I'm just like doing my thing. Terraforming Mars. Right, right. Building right. my own efficient engine or whatever versus like a lot of play interaction. But no, yeah, this is going to definitely, because everybody has different abilities and stuff, so you're going to have to depend on other right. people for things and really talk with people about things and really figure out what you should bid and when you should bid those sort things. Sort of like the you know? United Nations in space. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, I, I would imagine not as friendly, though. <laughs> because, I mean, at this point in time in, in U.S. history, they would not have been friendly with no. either But they kind of have to China. get along, it seems like. But you do know? they? Well, we'll see. Face to face, maybe. But we'll maybe see. Well, of, of course. Those, They're like still talking crap behind closed doors, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> And they ended the video in your favorite way, which was like a, a really bad pun. I know. It was really good. The I end of the it, video. it was super cute. You They're could tell it was like low budge, but they did a so good adorable. job with making it feel like a 2001. Right. Kinda like he's going through the wormhole. Yeah, I really enjoyed that as well. All right. So, hmm. <laughs> hmm. I feel like there's something else you want to say. Doc, er, Greg. <laughs> um, I think... I'm going to be surprising here and not say that this is the one I'm most excited about, partly because it is Pandasaurus Games. It will be available later. Mm -hmm. It will be cheaper. It's the most expensive of the four this week. Um, oh, that's right. This is at $70, yeah. but the Kickstarter stuff that you're getting for this are, like, supreme. Like, yeah. in Dead Man's Cabal, those skulls job. and stuff were fantastic. Yeah. They're doing oh a good gosh. job of trying to incentivize you to buy now, but I think... Uh, like I said, I always try to narrow myself down to one. I like all four this week. Mm -hmm. And just because it's a Pandasaurus game and I know I can get it later, I think I'm a pass. But it's the theme I'm the most excited about this week. Okay. If that, you know, so if, I, if all four of them were in front of me now and someone's like, which one do you want to play first? I'd pick this one. Yeah. If that makes sense. Okay. Okay. Dr. Glory Hog, what do you think? Yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> the monosyllabic. Just yes. Meeple manager. <laughs> Just yes. <laughs> I have to save my energy. Oh, there's there's that more was it? there's excitement coming later. No, uh, this this would be the one that I think I would back out of all of the ones this week. This one is the one I'm the most excited about. If you tell me like, if you put all four of these out, and this is the one you play the. This is the one you'd be the most excited about playing. That to me, that means that's the one you should back. <laughs> I know it does, right? <laughs> but there are other ones I'm excited about for different reasons. I'll explain. Oh yeah, and okay. So Vincent brings up a thing. Wait, Space Rex. So they're gonna have a themed expansion, which includes that's what is the island. dinosaur? Yeah, Dinosaur, dinosaur island, island on this. Yeah. So it's a mini expansion for Dinosaur Island. Are we Space right? Raptors. Are we building a dinosaur theme park? On the new world? No, Is that no, what's no oh, but okay. that would be cool too. That would be the, their <laughs> next they're expansion just, for this, like, right? Why we're in space. <laughs> <might as> well. <laughs> in space. They're just like, why we're in space? Let's just put some, you know, some air suits on some raptors. I'm glad that you guys caught that. Yeah, because they are going to be adding that in there. So it's hard to miss. You're like scrolling through a space game, and I was like, wait a second, wait why, a why second. Is there a dinosaur here? <laughs> space raptors? That's but a, that's a not normal. On, so at least you're not like. You know, you're not paying for something that you might not be using or for a game you don't have, which can happen sometimes. Who would not use that? I mean, I'd be playing with it on the table. With All right, now i got to see if there's, like, a <laughs> dollar backer thing on here, like if you just wanted the space dinosaurs. I would imagine there Who is. wouldn't want space dinosaurs, guys? Like, I didn't even think about that. Do you want to, like, name people who wouldn't? No. I, I oh. mean, I'm assuming the nobody nice wouldn't want space dinosaurs. The nice thing with space, space dinosaurs, dinosaurs, too, is the helmet's in the way, so they can't bite you. They'd they open them. But hold their breath. <laughs> bite. How do they hold they their breath it. and bite at the same time? Hmm. Do you breathe while you eat? Dinos in space. Nose? Do you? Don't you? How, what? how much food are you putting in your mouth that you no, need to I mean, be breathing like, consistently? No, I mean, if your mouth is full, you're still breathing. If your mouth is full. But, I mean, I don't sit there and go are out of my way to. Are you taking little tiny, like, listen, micro bites? Listen. <laughs> he has a tiny mouth, okay? Oh, do you have a tiny mouth? <laughs> yes, it's okay. It's It's okay. It's okay. 
It's not the size of the mouth that counts. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't even know where, where is this where has this stream gone? I, I don't know. know. I don't know. We've I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I really today. wish I could say she's on medicine, but I don't think she is. <laughs> I'm on cold medicine. <laughs> well, she's got board game stashed. Maybe she's got some medicine stashed as well. <laughs> Oh, uh, step this one. This is what happens when you don't have a day job, I guess. Step <laughs> one, like a make loopy. dinos. This step is two, the day job. get to space. Step three, get dinos to space. Step four, <laughs> dinos. Uh, dinos take over space. Step, fo step four is profit. Oh, oh right. Step profit. four is profit. I Sorry. Like the idea Apologies. Of the aliens Apologies. making the dinosaurs smart, and then they become their own alien race like of deep, super like hyper smart like dinosaurs. Like Deep Blue. Like Deep Blue Sea, where they made the uh, Nobody wants the that. The sharks really smart. Listen, oh, guys. Right, 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 that but. wasn't a mistake. No. No. <laughs> yeah, no, no, hey, no, no. So we're, we're no. underwater, yeah? And, and then you made the sharks yes. really smart. Yeah. <laughs> you the, know. The worst predator you could think <laughs> of. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're already a killing machine, but now they're genius killing machines. Yeah, smart, no, smart. that's bad. All sorts of and bad And then we're going to have guys. like a okay. giant open pool in the middle of our command center? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Don't stand too close to that, Samuel L. So Jackson. This one Spoilers. here. <laughs> this one here would normally be a back for me, but I am not huge into like social bidding games. Oh, that's just not personally okay. my jam. But yeah. you really liked that one, um, that really big one, Side Rule Confluence. Side Rule Confluence. That's not. That's an engine building game, really. Is there like a lot of bidding in that one? Th mm. It's very social, and there's like um, making deals. So it's more but social. it's not a worker placement game. Yeah, okay. this one here though, like you're like you put things in your hand, and you're like, all right, I'm gonna bid now. What's my bid and stuff like See, that. See, I like that. And that's, that's not my that favorite. That draws me in. That's not my favorite like mechanism or yeah. you know like mechanic it's because there's not enough unicorns in it that is there are not enough unicorns no well, no space unicorns space, i mean why can't we bring unicorns because that's just ridiculous unicorns aren't real greg <sighs> oh. but sidereal confluence good has point, engine building and stuff in it and then like you know containers like an economic game so that's different too I was even talking but about containers. Well, I'm saying, though, but down. all those are sort of bidding yeah. style games, and, but they're different. You, you want know? your worker placement to be more straightforward. Yeah, if I'm going to have worker social. placement, usually I just want worker placement. I think a lot of people that. would agree with you, actually. I mean, but that's kind of the, the Euros games are tend to be that way. The people who like them want to just focus on their own engine, do their own thing, and not hmm. have to worry about playing the table. You if know you're I mean? interested in this, though, like this is the time to get it for all of the Kickstarter rewards and stuff like that because, like, it looks amazing. You know, they're going to have all sorts of crazy pieces and stuff yeah. in it. You get your dinosaur expansion. Make sure you get everything taken care of. Let's see here. Sit. Sidereal Confluence needs dinosaurs and unicorns re That would be awesome. I think some of kind of like dinosaurs, if I remember right. I don't know. I'll have to look at the art again. Yeah, didn't – so Matt says, didn't seem like it was really conventional bidding. That's like – would you say that's like a standard bidding thing? Like you put something With in your hand? hand? Yeah. Yeah, that's th – that is a genre of But it's of just like games. a specific – It's closed it's bidding very yeah. open bidding. Yeah. I want to – Read your <laughs> your notes. Notes. Here. Oh this god. Is just my oh own god, guys. To all right. See here. All right. Really cannot read it. Next up, we have Sovereign Skies. This is by Deepwater Games. Oh my gosh, I'm going to turn that off. Okay. This is by Deepwater Games. It's going to be for one to four players, and it lasts for about 45 minutes. This has a Rondell style board, which means that it's your Randall. little ships. Is it Rand? What? It's no. Rondell. <laughs> it's Rondell. <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> it means your ships are going to be traveling around the board. <laughs> Too easy. And to then <laughs> when you land on certain planets here, these planets are going to give you certain abilities for your ships, whether you can move them, if you can get certain things. So I think that's a really unique thing about this particular game. This one is also in that, like, $30 range for games. This is a pretty inexpensive game. I was kind of... I was kind of like super excited about <laughs> how expensive well, it was. Because it has for it. cool art and it has <laughs> cool components. Like, it doesn't look like a $30 game. Right. Greg, now, what were your first impressions it looks like about he's this? He was in Bebo's studio. That's what it looks like. He, yeah. he was in Bebo's studio. There you go. Oh, was he? <laughs> yeah. Oh. That is Bebo's studio. <laughs> um, I've already he hearing buzz on this one. And, yeah. And that's always a good thing, right? I'm hearing it's really good. I'm hearing it's fast, it's streamlined, but it packs a lot of choice mm -hmm. and depth into it. And for 30 bucks, I mean, this feels like last week we talked about like, the mint game kind of being a no-brainer. Like, ten, if it looks interesting to you at all and it's 10 bucks, why not? This feels kind of the same way. Mm -hmm. And I like rondels, and I don't think they're used as often. Like, you can't sit and list 20 games with rondels. You can list 20 worker placements, but rondels, even though everyone seems to like them, seem underused, right? There's Crown of Amara, there's Finca, there's a few that come to mind. But Finca, classic. I always mm -hmm. tend to like rondels, so I'm I'm – 
I think if I have to pick just one this week, this is the one I would be Cold Water for. Crown, or was it Flesh Freshwater Fly? Was the last Rondo we talked about, and then Glenn Moore too. Okay. Also had Rondell. Yeah. So yeah, but it doesn't. It's not used as much as you think, considering everyone knows what right. a Rondell mechanism right. is. And so here we have sci-fi again, which appeals to me. Mm. You have a price point that appeals to me, a look that appeals to me, an established company. I like that pedigree. So mm -hmm. it just seems like it has a lot going for it. And the Game Boy Geek says this one has good streamlined mechanisms, special abilities, area control, set collection, and a race to better scoring chits. So is this one that you guys have played? This is not one I've played, but the played Game Boy either. Geek has it. So yeah, I mean he, he recommends it. Yeah, he well obviously, you know, and he did a thing on did it. He so get you can go up here and look solo? the saxophone serenade. I don't know. Oh, good question. Yeah, I'll we'll have to go look. We'll see if he responds. <laughs> But you can always go ahead and check that out as well. Oh, yeah, the switching directions oh, yes. thing seems cool, too. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely. Switching directions is so awesome. So, like, an efficiency <laughs> efficiency puzzle on top of everything else you're doing of, like, well, Who's this which, way, guy? which way is better to go, and when do I want to make the mm -hmm. switch and use the resources, and it just seems like it has a lot of thought and depth for a $30 game. And Luke... Space games are like so hot right now. Let me tell They've been you, hot like they. <laughs> forever. Are you kidding me? Like this. I is do feel like we've had a lot of space <laughs> games lately. Well, and this this hobby has its roots in mm -hmm. you know geekdom, which is like mm -hmm. a close cousin, obviously, to you know sci-fi nerds. Now, Doctor Glory Hog, what did you think about this game? No. <laughs> wow. Back to his moni monosyllabic <laughs> responses. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not uh, – space isn't usually my jam. I like Rondell games. I mean, the ones that I've played, but it's not like a, a must-have mechanism for me. So there's just – didn't seem to be anything here that I have to have. It's something that I'd be willing to play and, and see if it changes my mind, but it yeah. didn't leap off as something that like I felt like that, oh, my gosh, I have to have this. So you're saying try it before you buy no, I'm not ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I, this is one that I'll probably so end, like you end up buying at a, at a game store and coming home with it and being like, I probably should try this first. <laughs> well, and if it's thirty dollars on Kickstarter, like, what's it going to cost at, at like you know miniature market or something? You know, I so really like the little ships. Like they're so freaking adorable. Like Dr. I like Glory, meeple no. ships. <laughs> not often I say no, but, you know, you got to say it sometimes. Well, with this one here, I love the art on it. I love space games, guys. You know I love the space games. I like the rondelle system that they have here and how you make tough choices going around there and where you're going to land with those. Uh, I mean, there's not really anything bad I could say about this. The price is right. Like, the pieces are cute. Like, Come on this down. is Yeah, this is right up my alley and for games. And you got Deepwater Games. They've, they, oh, Deepwater they've Games. They've involved themselves with, like, Welcome 2 and have Koji and other really solid games. Oh, they so. part of Welcome 2? Yeah. I didn't know that. I like Welcome 2. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, like, it just seems like it, it, it checks a lot of boxes here. I think so. This is a for sure back for me, guys. Oh, this someone one. just looked it up. 40 games on BGG listed That's as well. That's not Ooh. that many, really. It's really not that many. Yeah, there's out of all of the BGG there's tens games. tens of thousands of games on BGG. I was going to say, because there's been more than 40 games are released at each convention. So, like, if you can think about it, that's not oh, even, like, yeah. a whole... You couldn't have a Rondell convention. There's not enough. No, you couldn't. <laughs> all right. So... Thanks Greg. for the research, Battle Cry. This is the one of the four that I'm the most most likely to back, that I'm most interested in, because of the price point, because of the pedigree. Does that mean you look. back that? Like, I don't, I don't <laughs> understand your response. Are you backing it or not? Like, sure. the whole point of this is, would you back this? <laughs> sure. <laughs> that doesn't sound That's like the plan. Sure. Okay. There you go. <laughs> You'd be like, I have to talk with the the ghost host first. Oh, so. Of course, of course. <laughs> I get introduced to them here, and then, you know, we, we consult. Dr. Glorhog, would you back this? This is a pass unless I play it and it changes my mind. Oh, really? Not super excited about the Space Rondell system, huh? <laughs> Did you not hear, like, the first part of what <laughs> I was saying? All I heard was... No. No. <laughs> and then a nod like this. I did talk after that, But too. even after Battle Cry said there's only 40 of them, you're still not uh, tempted? Yeah, no. Okay. Wow, okay, it's okay. Not, there's nothing wrong with it, but there's not there's no there's no excitement level for me based off of it Not being exciting space for you, Rondell. okay. Like, that's there, not it enough doesn't have me. an X factor, it sounds like for you. Yeah, it's just not for me, I don't think. Okay. Doesn't mean I wouldn't play it and it might be really good. But there's lots of games that you're just kinda like, Yeah, you only got so much money in the world. <laughs> I'm down. I need these meeples, guys. I need these space meeples. But Daniel Zayas like is really a sucker for 100 percent. I'm doing this first she player token. Look at that. Bam. You don't even I need play that. with them. That's what's like I need weird. This. Like what? She, she, she How? Was so 
dare you. She's always you. so super excited about these wood meeples How that are different you? shapes. <laughs> and then, like, they just sit in the box. Look at, look at, I have, I have wooden meeples right look, here, guys. Game oh, Boy, my God. Game Boy Geek just said you could play this on Saturday. Oh, there we go. There you go. Try before you buy right there. We'll report back to you guys, okay? And Daniel <laughs> Zayas ma made a good point that he feels like as the mechanic listings have been revamped on BGG, there might be more games that end up being listed as Rondell games. Than yeah. That wasn't currently. listed as Rondell before or something. Yeah, no, that's interesting. All right, so. Who's Daniel Zayas? Is, that, is he new? Yeah. Oh, I my God. I don't know. Next up, we have Unicorn Fever. This is by Horrible Games. Best company game name ever right and this is for three to five players it's going to last many. about 40 <laughs> minutes you're going to be racing <laughs> unicorns to the end of the rainbow while also trying to affect your unicorns that you have racing as far as you not you, well you don't actually own the unicorns like they're having their own race yeah, competition Jesus. and then you're influencing them with magic it's like and making deals tradition, with right? goblins and stuff like that yeah. i love how this game is like so pure and beautiful looking and then is like the dirtiest game to yeah. play. <laughs> it's, it's like, like sullied <laughs> by everyone trying to profit <laughs> off of these unicorns. That is what really sold me on this. Whenever I saw I could make uh, deals with leprechauns to make other <laughs> other unicorns fail <laughs> at their job, and like this for me was like camel up plus like dirty tactics. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a re-implementation of Horse Fever, which is a game that was acclaimed but it's like 10 years old you know oh, right really? so i'm kind of excited that it's got its roots in a game that i've been hearing good things about for a decade you mm -hmm. know uh but yet they kind of rethemed it and reskinned it with this really cute and clever and like eye-catching theme you know <laughs> <laughs> let's see here game boy geek says i have this one the original the original that i have two horse fever needed some streamlining and this did it Ooh, that's go. really good to know i really you like that the okay the thumbs up the serenade perfect down. okay dr glory hog what did you think about this game oh let's see uh <laughs> <laughs> honestly we got more than one sound you seem this time so excited about it that Figured that you probably were just going <laughs> <laughs> to he's, he's surrendered. <gasps> so, oh yeah, I just assumed goodness. that she's super into unicorns. So I figured that this is one that we would just end up backing. I didn't really think that there was, like, a debate. Well, like, you had. don't have a choice. <laughs> well, like. Well, you're not even going to talk about it. If you're it, super like into <laughs> a game, like, well, I just assumed you would have a lot to say about it. So I was just ready to mm. hear what you had to say. Mm. It yields what would the you? floor to you, it yeah. sounds like. I don't feel the need to filler bust on this one. Filler <laughs> bust. Okay. It's okay. not like this like Isofarian guard <laughs> I'm trying to talk her into. She's probably just going to get Glory it. Dr. Glory Hart goes <laughs> to Washington. <laughs> Aw, the unicorns look fat. Listen, un fat unicorns are super adorable, okay? Fat unicorns are happy unicorns. It's all about, yeah, you can get well some fat, fat unicorns, right? They die okay. off from obesity. They're <laughs> magical. They, they have wings. Off. They don't need to be thin. I mean, they they're like, flying. They like their oats, okay? Everybody likes oats, all right? <laughs> <laughs> now, Greg, what do you think? Well, I like horrible games. Yep. I mean, they've attach them. <laughs> I like horrible games. That, yeah. It's a funny <laughs> sentence, <laughs> admittedly. Um, you know, Dragon's Castle and Potion Explosion and King's Dilemma. Mm. I mean, they've got oh, a great yeah. track Railroad record. Railroad Inc., yeah. Yeah, rail yeah, exactly. So, I mean, this is um, this is like a close second for me as far as like ranking which ones I'd be most in gr in interested in grabbing. My only like reservation is that I own Downforce. You know, there's Camel Up. Like, there's a lot of these betting Which on see, racing we don't games. Have, we don't have yeah, those. Yeah, it's our a better fit currently. for you guys, probably. But you always say that. I think you just want us to buy the games. <laughs> well, <laughs> this is a better I fit for advise. you guys. Well, no, just because, I, like I said, like I have Downforce. It mm. plays a large player count. It does a lot of the same things this seems to do. So unless I were to play this, which sounds like I might get a chance to do soon, and and go like, oh crap, this is way better than down for us. I think it's kind of like I'm on the fence, you know. Guys, we should just postpone the show. Guys, and like go yeah, play we kind of should. We kind of should. Come back. Look at these plastic gems. And I need plastic gems in my life. And look at the little, <laughs> <and look> <laughs> little shamrocks. You have plastic gems like that in your life. Yes, but I want to play a this really also has cute, adorable unicorn game. This is the two Lorenzo designers. and yes. they, they have the longest. Lorenzo and Lorenzo? Lorenzo and Lorenzo. The Lorenzo <laughs> brothers. They ha I don't know if they're brothers. <laughs> I think they have different last names. But they have like the. From another mother. They have the best track record or pedigree of all of the designer, like of all the games designed this week. Like we talked about with um, the Panasaurus game, you know. 
first time designers. Right, right. You know, a lot of these are like this new got designers. got a good pedigree. Yeah, these are designers that have been around a while. That's right. And have proven themselves. So it's that's also co designed another by reason. Halmar Hach. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's how you say it. There you go. Yeah. And this particular uh, Kickstarter, you can get the painted unicorns. So those are oh, available. That's really cool. Yeah, where you. I mean. Painted. For this thing, I would probably get the painted unicorns because, like, guys, yeah, really, really, the ridiculousness. Can you get slimmed so down unicorns for one of our viewers? Oh my gosh! Who okay. prefers them? Oh my God, the Game Boy geek. Who's that guy? I don't know. I don't know about <laughs> him. He seems, he seems like ah, finally some reputable reviewers. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm super down with this game, guys. Uh, we don't have Camel Up. So to but me, I know you liked Camel Up when you. I do the like one. it, but and when I was looking at this, I was like, oh man, this takes some of those aspects and stuff, and then adds in this sort of fun social, like dirty fighting mechanism yeah. sort of stuff. I and just like wish we knew somebody that had this game and knows how to play it. Me too. Yeah, that would be, that would be able to like teach we need it to, to us. This next week, going okay, hey guys, we played us. them all now. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm super down with this game, guys. I'm going to back this game. It was like I when I saw like the little thing come out like, hey, it's going to be Unicorn Fever. I was already messaging horrible games. I was like, guys, tell me more about your game. I'm so I excited. Need to, know more. need to know all about this game. Apparently this week the part of Greg is played by Vincent Hawk, who says he's not backing anything this week. Oh, okay. So, guys, in the comments, let me know what you guys are backing this week out of these games because for – well, Greg – which game are you backing this week, I or which games? I think Sovereign Skies is the one that I've had to just narrow it down to one, but they all look good this week. Yeah. They're all tempting, yeah. Next week's not going to be any better, guys. Next week is not going to be any better. <laughs> i got to stop showing up to these things. <laughs> Dr. Glory Hog. Godspeed. Godspeed, okay. Yeah, that's the one, that's, that's the one you're most sure. excited about. Okay. Guys. Uh, guys. Guys. Okay, guys so. Guys and gals. And women and men. My two favorites. My two favorites were actually Manchuko and Unicorn Fever. Really? But okay. I do think that Unicorn Fever is just a little bit on top, but not because, like, it's a better game or anything. It's because, like, Bang for your buck, it's, maybe? like, ridiculous, and I love the ridiculousness yeah. of it, and it's making me, like, overly, like, excited to get it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's, like, self-aware. Well, it has a sense of humor about itself. Right. Yeah. I feel like I could introduce unicorn fever to anybody and play with like my yeah. kid and my non-gamer friends and like everybody's gonna love it and i that's just the sort of game that i'm looking at well this you bring week, it to I the think. table you're like we're gonna race unicorns people are like right. okay, that's hilarious right you, go, you bring manchuko you're like okay we're oppressed it's 1932 right. like people are like I don't know. Like, this is this going to be <laughs> fun? Like, like, no one's going to turn down, let, let's race unicorns across the rainbow. Like, it's right. just universally delightful. But Manchuko is definitely going to be, like, the little bit more, like, okay, crunchier sort of thing. Game. Yeah, more gamery game. Yeah, yeah. So, in the comments here, we had, okay, so... Vincent says, usually nothing grabs me this week. My wallet is screaming with delight. I totally get that. You if I had to, it out. would be Godspeed, <laughs> says Battle Cry. Okay. If you had to, that sounds so sad. <laughs> if I had to, and there was a gun being held to my head, I would ha and I had to buy a game today. Okay, and Eric says, if anyone at my game night trotted one of these out, trotted, I'd happily. Uh, see what he did there? Give all of them a try, but I don't know which of these get elevated to my I need my own copy. It's going to be a tough few weeks, guys. Like, there's a lot of really good stuff coming out right now. So that's the hardest thing is being so picky and choosy about where you're going to spend your money, you know. And it's not really based upon, all right, which one's the better one. It's based upon which one is the better one for me, you know. Which one's the better one for a strategic gamer? Which one's the better one for a Meritrasher? Which one's the better one for a Euro gamer? Like, that's kind of where it falls. Well, that's part of why I like Sovereign Skies is just because it's so affordable, mm -hmm. you know. And I know next week there's going to be another batch of amazing games, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> the fact that I can get a game that seems to pack a lot in and, like, a cheap package. I mean, right. you can't, you know, that's, that's definitely a factor you can't not consider. Mm -hmm. It's the Oscar Mayer hot dogs of all the game picks, you know, like... You're going to get the most bang for your buck out of it. And then Kabuki Kid says it's I'm not Hebrew <laughs> national, but <laughs> says I'm not much of a racing fan. One of the only racing games I like is Robo Rally, and that is because it's more of a programming game. I totally yeah. get that. Yeah. yeah. And P 
what Peter says, nothing I saw that makes me desperately want to back it. And Vincent is backing Deadly Doodles game. So if you guys haven't checked out Deadly Doodles 2 expansion, they upped that game like so much. You should at least check it out. It's a draw and draw game or a roll and write game. And people can still watch your video of you guys playing it, right? Live? Oh, absolutely. We did a playthrough yeah, of it and everything. Yeah, check that video out if you haven't seen it already. We took that down. Absolutely. You no. took <laughs> it down. It was a limited offer only. She, uh, she <laughs> took it down because I won. They <laughs> made it from like Greg. They Because you played Deadly Doodles, right? I don't I think I ever have okay. actually. So they made I it know the premise, though. from like a family friendly, okay, yeah. let's do this, to like a super hardcore like gamer game where you have yeah. different map one is still in that friendly area, map two is harder, and then map three is like ridiculous. Like it's crazy. Let's see here. Can you describe what makes people want to go back to games they haven't played versus great ones that are already out that they can try? I think part of it is um, engaging with the community, mm -hmm. right? Like feeling like you're part of it, like, hey, I helped bring this game to light. And I'm not a big Kickstarter person, but, I mean, I think that that's uh, an element of it. I survive off a hype. You know what I mean? Do feeling you? like you're with the community, yeah. getting the box in the mail when everyone else does, excitedly sharing your experience it's with it. It's a way to plug into your community. You know? A good analogy would be it's like watching Game of Thrones yeah. every week with everyone exactly. and going to work on Monday and talking about it versus going – yeah, I just watched The Sopranos yeah. last week. And, and everyone's like, like, we don't cool, want to talk about The Sopranos <laughs> anymore. That was great eight <laughs> years ago. And even though it's known to be a great yeah. show, there's a difference between being in the moment with it and being like a weekly watcher that's like, and oh, my gosh, I just watched it. It's amazing. What do you think? What do you think is going to happen next? Yeah. Versus going, oh, I played this game that came out 10 years ago. And everyone's like, yeah, cool. We all have. And Dan asked this question, and he's not like a big <laughs> social media, you know what I mean, person. But I think a lot of people in the hobby – they don't have immediate gamers near them as much as they'd like. They don't get games to the table as much as they'd like. And so they sort of survive off of connecting with the community online, you know, playing things oh online. Oh, yeah, that's very true. That kind yeah. of stuff. And well, so I think that's part of what Kickstarter cashes in on is people feeling like they're part of the online gamer community, you know? That makes sense. Well, it's like for a while we weren't playing RPGs, but we, we would still buy, like, the newest books and all that stuff just so we could talk to our, our friends about it, even if it was just online. Yeah. And we didn't have the time to play it, but we still could be like, oh, yeah, I saw this new book, and you can do this and this and this. It's so cool and everything. And I think <laughs> who doesn't do that? What does really that. brings me back to a game is always whenever I'm introducing it to people because I think – if I'm especially if I'm introducing people to games or somebody, you know, comes over to my house, I'm like, oh, man, you would really love this game or, oh, you should try this game. And I think it's that sharing portion of it, like sharing games with people is what always brings me back to games and the certain games that I play, you know, like, I mean, I would love to play Dead of Winter. That's one of my favorite games, but I never get it to the table as often as I should. But I don't introduce a lot of people to it, whereas like, I don't know what what. Oh, uh, the what is the Lucky Deck game? The detective game? Oh, Chronicles of Chronicles Crime. Chronicles of Crime. I've yeah. shown Crime so many people Chronicles yeah. of Crime. Asking for troubles. Because it's easy, it's exciting to get people into it. Like, that one gets to my table more often because of the type of people that I introduce to it. So but that's the factor for me. I think Dan is just sort of questioning in general why back things when you can just go buy the new thing that's out now. Well, and backing things is like, <laughs> well, like like we said, the hype train. Well, and yeah. the hype train. too, it's like buying something off of Amazon. It kind of feels special when it gets delivered to your door versus just going to the store and buying it. You're like, cool, Plus I've got this thing. Which, I mean, we still buy a lot of local games at our game sure, store. But sure. there is something to be said about that. Delivery showing up and you're like, ooh, and opening up and it's like a little, it's like a, you get that present vibe. Well, you also it. forget it's coming. Right, it's a present vibe. It just sort of shows up and you're like, oh yeah. So there's the excitement there. But I mean, I tend to lean the direction that Dan, I think, is talking about where it's like, I'd rather see the buzz first and hear the reviews. I don't need to be the first one but to play something. But are you like that something. with like movies? Do you wait till you hear the reviews before you go see a movie well, or do you try to go see the advanced screening? Well, the nice thing about movies is they often get reviewed before they're released. Mm -hmm. So it's not the best metaphor, but I understand what you're saying. So I'm an advanced screening. I'd rather take oh the yeah. shot and go to advanced screening than wait till there's but a But that's also out. a $10 or $14 gamble versus like a $50, $60, I think $70 gamble as well. It's all the same to me. Money is irrelevant. <laughs> that's true. I forgot. I think the sweet Ever Kickstarter since you rewards, oil in the guys. Backyard. So the sweet Kickstarter yeah, rewards make too. a huge factor in yeah. that because if there's a game, yeah, exactly. If there's a game yeah. that has a lot of really excellent looking backer rewards that you're going to be getting, I mean, you end up backing it on Kickstarter specifically for those rewards because you're like, oh man, I'm not going to be able to get these anywhere else, Plus or I'm only going to be able to get these at conventions, or they're not going to print this game the same way. And that makes a huge factor, I know, for me, because when I get a game, 
I want like I want that table presence. I want throw it on the table and for people to go, oh, ooh, ooh uh, what are these really nice tokens? Where do I get these at? And I'd be like, ha, <laughs> you can't get them. <laughs> you can't get those tokens. Wow. <laughs> when you buy this game, the unicorns will be gray, not painted. Well, I do like the idea. You paint your own unicorns, people. <laughs> I do like the idea of having a game like that's harder to get to. And a lot of times that's what you get off Kickstarter's games. And you're like, yeah, you're not going to be able to really find this game. Well, but I've got a copy of this. So if you yeah. want to play it, you've got to come play with me. It kind of, <laughs> appeal, <laughs> it kind of appeals to that like hipster vibe. Like, oh, I got this game. You might not have heard of it. Only 500 people <laughs> backed it. For me, it's not <laughs> oh so much gosh. like the hipster vibe. It's just more like a, I've got this really cool, unique game that you probably yeah. never heard of. And then you get to introduce somebody else that to it. That feeling of being in like an exclusive club or whatever. And yeah. then we Daniel Zayas also says, how many burritos is an early screening? So you should just have. It's like one and a half, maybe two burritos. It depends yeah. on the mood. It, well, it matters if you have popcorn and stuff well, or then not. Well, it's three burritos then it if you have oh. popcorn. Right. If, if you want a bottle of water, it's four it's burritos. It's four burritos <laughs> for that. Yeah. I so spent seriously like $14 getting oh. – when I was in Seattle for PAX, we watched Midsummer, and it was $14 for a small popcorn and a water, a bottle of water. Whoa. For just that. Like, the ticket was less. than yeah. the, And I was like, yeah, Seattle's and expensive. Eric, it's all about the burrito math here because you need to know – how many burritos it takes to get something yeah. because that's what you're sacrificing on your game night. It's okay. A you're sacrificing burrito yeah. analysis. You're sacrificing going and getting a burrito and not having to make dinner versus playing a game and getting that benefit out of the game. So it's super important. Well Daniel Zayas brings up a good point. So he's talking about yes broccoli. And I don't remember if you were around or paying attention when that was going on. Yeah. But that was a very small card game that hadn't even funded yet. Yeah. And then between like I think it was like Martin Poole and Derek Funkhauser and Daniel Zayas and just the ridiculous hype all the different Facebook groups From had yes about this broccoli. Yes Broccoli. Like that game funded honestly, I can honestly say that I feel like it funded because of those communities and people just yeah. being like, You gotta get it on Yes Broccoli and it, like people bought like four copies yeah. of it and just and I don't know, like, the game is probably fine, but, like, it funded because of the crazy community hype that got built up it's around like it. It's like the meme culture that we live in, right? Like, jumping in on a meme and, yeah. like, being in, uh, like, the in crowd or getting the in joke. That's why the oatmeal games get made. It's yes. not because they're, like, the most intense games ever. It's because right. of, like, I've got exploding kittens. Have you seen this? Or I've got unstable yeah. unicorns. It's just... So, and there are also some Kickstarter games, though, guys, that you still cannot get after the Kickstarter right, though. Yeah. Like yeah, it's like not Seventh like Continent, every single it's like hard to find still. Right. It's not like every single game company out there. I mean the big ones you can usually purchase them after but market. Not even always like hate for instance. I mean I right. wasn't something that it looked like I would want. But, but I've you heard still people can't really find it. Yeah, I've heard yeah. people playing it who say it's actually a pretty good tactical miniatures. And game. you can only usually you know? get it for more than what it would have cost on the Kickstarter. I can you see somebody selling it. Name off like a handful of games that we had like in Vino Morte, I think it was, or just like little games here and there that I was like, man, I wish I would have backed this game or I just missed it. And then right. all of a sudden it's just gone. Like there's just none and yeah. it's too small of a game to get like a reprint off of anytime soon. And especially like with those games, you're really helping someone right. sort of fulfill their passion or their dream to like bring something to light. You know right. what I mean? Real talk. Do you think Dan's like regretting asking this question? He's <laughs> like, well, I did not expect a 20-minute no, diatribe. 20 minutes later. <laughs> 20 minute diatribe from Greg and Derek. But and this part of the conversation is more interesting almost sometimes to me than is this game good or not? Should you back it or not? Because I do think this is like an interesting, so interesting sort of sociological look at like w yeah. the hobby and why we do what we do and, and what to back and, and where to spend our money. And different too because her and right. I get more on the hype and we're likely to pay a premium for that where you and your wife – are more you guys get your excitement from getting a really good bargain and being able to look at a game and go like this is a good game and I got it for ten percent off. Well, like when like we talked about Tyrants of the Underdark, yeah. you were almost more excited to tell me about <laughs> how you got it when I it got was it still on the new. Ding and dent shelf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I don't mind buying a ding and dent, but like. Yeah. Getting it right away is almost more important than getting it a year later at a discount. Well, and me. I also think the hobby is changing. I think there's more we're more tied in as a community through social media. And for me, I'm still kind of like catching up to that because That's I was true. gaming before Facebook was a thing, you know, or before Twitter and all this stuff. And so back then the idea was Buy the game that you're going to want to still play 10 years from now. Where and now it's like, buy a game that's going to be fun. And buy a game that wave. everyone's talking mm. about, play it a few times, trade it out, and get the next one. There's oh, no. my and goodness. That's, sort of, that's no. almost more like the video game culture's influence. It's not necessarily a good or bad thing. It's just it's changing. The mm. hobby is changing. And, and because we're more connected, yes, Daniel, Tyrants is a great game. Yeah. Um, because the culture of it is changing, people are buying games for different reasons. Uh, so some of the some of the comments here. Yeah. Was solid, man. Bach, was impressive design. Bulk 
Balk, Balk, Balk. Balk. Yeah, that was another one that was a good game. Very simple game yeah, that constant. you're just not you're not going to be able to get, you know. Yeah. And he's right, backing yes. up your point of like the games that just disappear. Like seventh, oh, yeah, seventh chance. continent will get the super nerfed release on that. So if you go into Kickstarter and you're not about the hype, that's probably a good way to do it is to go for those manufacturers that probably aren't going to pre reproduce it. Right, exactly. But it's harder to pick those ones out just because overall they usually don't have as much hype and you don't have as much information and stuff and like that. And they haven't had as so much development in theory if as if well right. as the like games by the bigger companies. If there was only like some kind of source, <laughs> like a group of people that look at them like yeah. constantly like and they can give you updates on them. Like in a timely manner, like every week where you're like, oh man, it's Friday <laughs> and I've got money in my hand. What game should I look Payday, at that I haven't baby. seen? If only if there was a source like that oh. to help people. Is Dan getting rid of He's his awkward getting rid guess? of his awkward guests. Oh, my goodness. I thought he liked that game. Dan, you guys Dan, might beat him. Well, I was going to say, what percentage of that is because I won that game? <laughs> 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 I, I, I'm convinced if he had won, he'd be more likely to keep it. I beat it. her in it, and she was <laughs> like, really? And I was like, yeah. I like think everyone else. was shocked <laughs> when I won because we went into it, and I went, I'm a big deduction guy, but I guess we'll see how this goes. And then I won it, and everyone's like, Whoa, Greg well, won. We What's played, happening here? We played Clue together <laughs> years ago, and she just trounced me. So I think she thought, oh, this is a more complicated than Clue. You're going down. And then I won it, and she was kind of like, mm hmm well, mm -hmm. I think uh, mm -hmm. uh, fortune favors the bold a little bit, an awkward guess. Yeah, I think so. You have to kind of go out on a limb because everyone's getting a lot of information. Mm -hmm. You have to kind of jump in a round or two and hope that your like educated guess is good enough. All yeah. right, guys. So thank you like for place work. everybody who joined <laughs> us today. <laughs> Greg, where can we check you out at? Uh, Hooked on Geek, new podcast every Monday, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Mm -hmm. Check us out. Derek, where can we check you out at? Uh, anywhere under Dr. Glory Hog, or of course, you can always reach me through the Glory Hound stuff also. That's right. <laughs> and what else? Do I yeah, Rincon. Rincon's coming up. We appreciate you guys sticking with us through the whole whole end part questioning thing we have going on here. I question so much <laughs> in my life right now. So next week, since we are going to be at Rincon, we're probably <laughs> going to move the Kickstarter show around. I don't know if we're going to do an early or I guess since we're all there, maybe we can well, find a time to Friday. stream it. I don't know. Okay, so you won't be there on I'll Friday. I'll be working Friday, so I don't know okay. either. But so you guys can do one. We're going to have to figure it out. Away his loss. Look at this. Look at mm. this. Oh, look at <laughs> that. I forget. The hand magic game is still forward deduction. I'm pretty deduction to be heavy. Yeah, it is lighter than I expected to be, although you can ratchet up the difficulty of it, I guess. But I was I ag agree that like with all the prep and everything I expected it to be it was a lot of prep game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was actually yeah. fairly simple and straightforward. I just don't think I like social deduction games. So even like with the win, I'm still like okay. I tend to like social deduction games more than just straightforward deduction games. <laughs> Next well. week we're gonna end really up like doing them. more playthroughs. I have I actually got some codes for a Munchkin stream version something or another so i'm oh. super excited to do a playthrough of that we're going to start doing magic the gathering mondays oh. and there's some other stuff we got some kickstarters in we're going to do some streaming with that and am i missing any other streaming thingies i don't know well, we're going to figure out what we're going to do this friday since we will be actually this coming friday yeah yeah we all right so just stay it. tuned for more information and thank you guys for showing up and hanging out with us we appreciate all of your comments and everything and we will see you guys all next week